So before I go to the presentation, I want to do a second short poll with you, just to know if our audience is actually familiar with the Musica database and if you know what it's all about. So I will launch that poll now. Um, and then maybe I will talk a little bit while people are um, voting. Um, the Musica database is um, an enormous database and I will not give you any statistics now. You can look all this up on the website that I will show in a moment. Um, but it's a very useful tool if you want to get new ideas. So if your own library um, is not um, showing the ideas that you are looking for and you want to see what else is out there, what else exists. And um, this is especially effective, um, for example, if you have a topic like I will choose the topic of flower that Patrick mentioned. And if I want to know what songs exist that are talking about flowers and that I may not know yet. Um, and um, I will show you just very shortly because uh, a webinar hour is quite short um, on this example, how you can search in Musica and then I will mostly encourage you to just go to the Musica database and try it out yourself. So we have now had 103 votes, so I will end the polling and we can have a look at the distribution and I will share the results again. So about 23% of the people listening um, are familiar with the database and have already used it. About 30% have heard about it but have never used it. And uh, the majority has actually never heard about it. So I'm very happy that we chose to present the Musica database in this context because I'm sure that um, for those 70% who have never used it or more than 70%, you will discover a tool that can help you a lot. So um, let's have a quick look at it. And um, I would like to remind our members before I go into the presentation that members of ECAC as one of their membership advantages actually have a privileged full access to the Musica database and they can see more than if you just go to the public page. So if you are a member, go to our members only section and make use of this advantage. And I will now share the website and hope that I can actually do a live presentation, which is nicer than just showing slides. So when you go to the Musica database, um, you will be able to access the website. And um, then you will find um, a search form. And if you are there for the first time, you can watch a tutorial on how it works. Now, these are only the very basic um, keywords. So I could just type in now um, that I want to search for songs with flower. But if I do that, I will probably get like 1000 um, uh, hits and it will be rather tiring to look through all those examples. So if I choose more criteria, I have the possibility to actually adapt the search to what I want exactly. So I could also look for pieces from composers I have heard a composer's name and think, oh, maybe there might be interesting music, or I could search for a specific piece that I have heard about. But I can also use keywords. So in this case, for example, in keywords, I could type in flower. And um, then I could choose which language I want to sing in, which I would not do now. And I can say, do I have a mixed choir, an equal voice choir? And I chose, let's say, I have a school choir or um, an amateur choir that only can sing three parts. So I chose SAB with three voices only. I can say, how long do I want the piece to be? And let's say I say I want it to be two to five minutes because that's a good uh, length for such a, um, a program where I want to mix a lot of different pieces. And I can indicate how good is my choir. So how difficult should the pieces be? And I choose three as being a middle level, for example. Um, I can also add specific publishers if I know them. Um, and um, I can add instrumentation, um, how many instrumental parts, or I can choose, I want to find um, composers from a specific country. So I want to do a Swiss program. So let's see which Swiss composers there are. And um, pointing to what um, uh, Patrick just said, and I can only support this, there are so many female composers around that people don't know about. 
um, you can also uh, indicate a gender and say, I only want to find female composers or I only want to find male or I want both. In my case, I want both. So I will go for the search. And um, I will then get a list of entries that um, fulfill the criteria. Now you have to know that these um, entries are being entered either by publishers or by volunteers who are entering loads of scores into the Musica database. And um, they are also the ones, obviously, that have entered the keyword. So sometimes you will say, what, Guantanamera? I would not have called this a flower song, but probably the word flower or the name of a flower appears somewhere in the text. So the person who put this into the system um, put the word um, flower as a keyword. And then you can see the basic information about every score here already, and you will find some symbols that show you which additional information or resource you can access. And I will show you in a minute what this means, but um, it means that you can have maybe access to an excerpt from the score. You can have the text, you can have maybe a translation of the text, you can have a pronunciation guide, and you can, um, you can sometimes also have a recording um, so you can listen to a choir singing. I've chosen this piece just because there's a lot available about it. So I can show you um, as an example what comes out if you hit this piece. Um, so it's a Swedish song that some of you may know. And um, first of all, in this middle section, you will find um, the basic information. And for some scores, this is very complete. And for others, it's a bit less complete. But so you will find the publisher. So you know where to order it. You will find in which language the text is, which century, what genre, type of choir, if there are soloists, if there is an accompaniment. The difficulty for the choir, which is something I had searched for. So I said my choir is level three, so middle difficulty. But there's also a difficulty for the conductor. And sometimes maybe a piece is easy for the choir and difficult for the conductor or the other way around. So you can also judge this a little bit. And you have the duration, which in this case is 2.5 minutes. And um, then below, you have um, sometimes a physical library um, that has either entered the score or that has the score. Now, what I find especially interesting in Musica also is this, what you find up here, means what can I find about this piece? And I go on view and I can get an excerpt of the score. Um, and I can go on text and I will be led to a website where I can find the original text, which here you have to scroll down and then you will find the whole original text, which is also nice if you do a program book, for example. And then you might have a translation of the text into English and sometimes into other languages. So you can also um, use that at some point. Um, yeah, there is the English translation, as you can see. And in this specific case, I also have a pronunciation Den file that gives me help on how to pronounce Swedish. And um, then we don't have that for this song, but when you see the little um, headphone here, um, when I click on this one, for example, um, then I can also have an audio excerpt. Um, and I can listen to a recording. Um, so this was a very quick presentation. Um, we don't have enough time to go into details, but I just wanted to show one example. I would really like to simply encourage you to um, go to the um, website yourself and to try it out and um, to see um, what you find. You can spend many hours there and you will be astonished um, what you can see. So I think that was about my presentation. I don't know if there are any questions about this part, um, but um, I think it's not so important. I would prefer to use the question time mostly for Merel um, and, and Jean-Claude. So I would suggest that I will look at the written questions and answers in case there's something coming up on Musica. It is always so clear, Sonia, that there are no questions at the moment. 